recording in three, two, one. All right. What's that? Where the heck is this? Check, check. We're unmuted. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Hold on, babe. It's, something's not working. Something's oh, not oh, working. Okay, is it what? working now? Is it working? Are we there yet? <laughs> okay, I don't know. For some reason, it wasn't showing. Well, it takes a second to start. No, 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 no. Right. This whole time, it hasn't been showing your screen up. It was showing my face to the world, apparently. Oh, so it, didn't, it wasn't showing the pictures the whole time? It's weird. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. <laughs> it was scary things, Ox. Scary things are happening. Scary things are afoot. <laughs> the that Circle was K. The show, just yeah. My face. Yeah, that's it. I'm so sorry. New <laughs> kind of tutorial. We just show you a picture of Liz. Enough yeah. said. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> right on. <clears throat> so we're doing metal and corrosion today, and um thought I'd shake it up a little bit and uh, I'm going to show you three different kinds of metals how to kind of do them or how I would do them um, but if you got questions and you want something specific ask via the chat button right oh there's a Q&A button at the bottom of the screen yes go ahead while we're push sitting it. here and push it yeah and, and ask it. a ridiculous question that you think I would never answer and I will answer it will um probably yeah, i'll get so kicked off of zoom <laughs> please post all of your questions in the q a tab because if not it's it may end up getting lost in the chat tab also change your drop down menu from hosts and panelists to everyone oh yeah so that so i don't look like i'm talking to myself yeah and if you didn't know that's the lovely liz hunt right there Hi. and she is my moderator and she's the one who keeps me in line and you in line too so <laughs> mostly me so <laughs> good times so what do you guys think of those new coffin breakers or the scafford highwaymen those models are freaking cool i think i already painted some so you know of but we, you we will be using some of the coffin breakers today to do some metal even though they only have a little bit of metal on them but i thought it'd be cool um so yeah so hopefully you're able to pick some of those up um, they said they're really cool. They, they are really cool. Ordered yeah. them, but they're not here yet. Yeah. It was just last night, though. <laughs> yeah. Where the <laughs> heck are my models? Gosh. <laughs> it's it's Good a time. question to, like, already kick us off. Question. Answer. I mean, answer. Ask it. <laughs> Jeez. I use contrast paints to shade my gold. Have you tried this? No. Um, yeah, actually, I, I Liz looked like, at me what? so fast. <laughs> what do you mean, no? I love contrast paints. Um, so just to be clear with everybody, uh, I use every kind of paint known to man, not just the Flying Frog ones, um, not just Citadel, whatever. I use whatever works. So um, we'll be using a lot of the, the, uh, the war paints today, but we also have a few other ones. I've got some Citadel colors, that just specific colors that I really, really like. Um, it doesn't mean that you couldn't mix your own out of all the war paints that, that Flying Frog has, but I, I just like pouring it out of the bottom. So, <laughs> but contrast paints are fantastic for like metallics and stuff. Sorry. I just like downed a beer really fast. Maybe not the best did idea. Really right? did? I did. Oh my God, did. I did Modelo Especial. Um, oh <laughs> anyways, I'm a little burpy. Um, I only drank half of it, so I'm good. Um, <laughs> it's, Sorry, it was guys. dinner time. Our pizza came a little bit later than we were expecting. You know, we downed it. We're good. We're now it's paint night, which is awesome. Um, and I like hanging out with all the flying frog fans. So, um, yeah. So anyways, um, yes, I use contrast paints a lot. I really like them. I airbrush them too. I airbrush them and paint paint them in. I also use them for dark lining and stuff because they're so they're so thin and they do their little contrasty thing. Um, so maybe uh, if you guys remind me, I'll show you a little bit of just using contrast paints on on um, on the metallics. But for now, we're going to use um, 
the inks and stuff that come in the war paint sets for Shadows of Brimstone. So, anyways, um, what should we do first? Gold, silver, or copper? Type in the chat. Type in the chat. Go. Vote. If you say nothing, we'll just sit here. I have no problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, we got two for copper. All right, we let's got do one for silver. Okay. Okay, there we go. Um, and then there's different ways you could put your paint on, too. So we might cover some of that here today, too, depending on how much time we have. So let's start with copper. Um, here's the funny thing. There's no copper in the Shadows of Brimstone set. Um, what we do have is, and let me switch over to my paint cam here. Um, we have bronze. And this came with the uh, Forbidden Fortress set. Um, so, but we can use bronze. I'm going to pour some onto my palette here. I'm going to show you what I had been working on earlier today. So I wanted to have, it takes forever for this stuff to dry. So <laughs> um, this is straight bronze on the statue. And then here it is with my wash. So it looks more like copper. So let's discuss how we get from here to there. Um, that will basically be using a dark tone ink. You can either use strong tone, tone ink or dark tone ink. It doesn't really matter. Basically, we're going to modify this, this paint. Um, let me just go right onto my palette. We are uh, recording this, by the way. So um, afterwards, there will be a crystal, crystal clear um, copy of this rolling around on the internet somewhere. That I'm sure Flying Frog will tell you about. Yeah. So I've got our wash right there, or it's a, they call it an ink, it's a wash basically. I'm going to use a little bit of this uh, Crimson Hand Red, which is a darker red, it's sort of like a burgundy. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of black. I've used all my War Paint black, so I'm I'm having a little bit of Reaper black. Doesn't matter, just black. Black is the color you want. So what I'm gonna do is you've got this, this wash basically, right? So it's see-through, it's kind of thin, um, great, gets down in cracks and stuff, but it's just black. And I don't want just black. I know that copper is more of a reddish color. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of this crimson. See how it changed my wash into a, a reddish wash? And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of black. And what this will do is this gives me a little bit more opacity, so I only have to hit maybe once, maybe twice, um, on my on my washes. So I'm gonna grab a little bit more of my strong tone wash, put it in there just so I have a little bit more paint. So this is a great way of changing the color of your wash to a different color. Um, <clears throat> you could do it with purple or green or whatever color you want. So. Let's switch back. This guy. So what I'm going to do, um, usually when I'm applying my washes on, on, and I will do the same thing like on my silvers and stuff, but on this, I want to get it a little bit more tinted red. So move my light down a little bit. And actually want to switch brushes. So I really like, um, for base coating and stuff, I really like using just a regular craft brush, um, just a uh, synthetic hobby brush, because they seem to put the paint down a little bit more evenly and stuff. Um, so I'm going to grab a little bit smaller brush. I'm just going to put a big old glop here of this. So I'm going to start way down low by the feet and just sort of paint it on. And I'm putting it on really, really thick. Kind of work my way up these feet, maybe go right up between the legs there, the sides. Not really worrying about highlights or anything. I'm putting it on thick because what I'm, gonna, oh, what I'm gonna do next, thank you, um, is take it off. So we're, it's like a, a subtractive style of painting. So we'll put some on. You gotta work quick because it does start to dry on you. I'm gonna take my brush. It's not wet, but it's damp. 
and I'm gonna just gonna remove some of this paint right down the leg. So see how that removed a bunch of it that way? I'm gonna do this side too. And I'm not doing so much, I don't wanna do brush strokes because that will, that will actually mess it up. I just wanna lay the brush down. It's always good to clean your brush off every once in a while because you will get a bunch of this wash in your brush. Or like I'm using a, a puddle pad right here. Um, it's always great if you have to go to the bathroom midstream, but um, it's also good for wiping your brush off. So I'm just sort of taking off some of that wash right there. Now I'm gonna also apply up here. And if you guys have questions on this, ask, like ask. Don't feel, don't be shy um, because we're here to learn how to do this stuff. If you don't understand quite how I'm wicking away the paint, I can maybe explain it a little bit better. But so I'm basically trying to get some nice shadows in here that go up and then become that first color that I put on. See, I just put a little bit more. I only took off at the top of that wash. If I take off the whole thing, I literally take off the entire wash. So um, if that's the look you wanted, then great, but I don't want that look. I want, I want it actually to look a little bit more reddish. So put some more on, take it off, wipe my brush off. I'm gonna do the mid part of the body. Something like that. No. So I kind of clean, I like cleaning my brush off in my palette. You can't really see me doing it. Um, but I leave some of the, uh, I have a wet palette, so I leave some of the sponge showing. And I just sort of wipe wipe my brush off there and then dap it on my paper towel. Um, so I'm just sort of getting all the excess water off. Because if you put too much water on this, the, the wash just goes everywhere. And we don't want that either. So um, let's do these arms. You almost notice I'm kind of going between sections. So I let the bottoms of the arms be a section, the tops of the legs are a section, and then that way I don't end up, I can do a small part at a time and it doesn't, it doesn't start drying on me. Do this one, get up in this arm. I could technically have a much larger brush to apply this with as well, but this was the brush I had in front of me, so um, it works out. So wipe off my brush, take off a bunch of this up here. This same technique works just as good for, uh, like, say, um, if you're doing clothing or whatever as well. Put my light a little bit. So on the inside edges, I'm gonna make it real dark. Way in the right in the inside where it touches the rest of the model. I'll kind of do a little bit of feathering there. Let's do the head. This is where it looks like we just kind of obliterate the face, but we will bring it back by wiping some of this off. Oops. This is the super exciting, super tedious part of painting. And then we will watch this dry for two and a half hours. or we'll start on this side. That's why I did the other side. <laughs> so another thing that I do, that I like to do, is um, uh, kind of a dark lining technique where you kind of put dark lines around all the elements. Actually, I should probably get my glasses on so I can see. Um, so I'm gonna start shoving my wash in by the fingers, the, the in between the fingers and knuckles and stuff, and then wipe a little bit of it off. Got some paint pulling down here. I'm just gonna kind of spread it out. The worst thing you can do with washes is is have them pool, meaning like there's big, you know, uh, lakes of of wash on your model. 
um, because those will end up uh, leaving watermarks and stuff, and we don't want that. So let's go like this. So I'll put in, I don't have to be perfect here, but I will put in some sort of dark lining in between different elements. Like there's a nice six pack going on here on the statue. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're still, there's still some other uh, things we gotta do to this, but that down like that. This starts giving us like better definition. Like you can see the figure better if you do this. Um, if you feel like your wash isn't dark enough at this point, you can always add a little bit more black to it. That's just regular opaque black. And then that way when you do your dark lining, it will be a little bit darker than the rest. And if there's still paint wet in there, it will kind of mix in with that paint as well. So. Very quick and you get a pretty pretty darn good result right off the bat. I need to do these parts because I missed them. So I always try to put this on a little bit bigger than I think I need it and then wipe away what I don't want. It's like this. We got that. Ta-da! So any questions on just the initial washing and mixing paints in? Um, if you wanted to, you could put inks in there. Um, it doesn't really matter as long as they don't have adverse reactions with the paint you already have on there. Um, should be okay. So we have a couple of questions. Okay. All right, so the Hit first me. one was... Hold on, I guess scroll back up. Okay. Dave wanted to know if soft, when you using soft tone, do you mm -hmm. use that more for flesh and cloth? Yeah, so that would be lighter. Um, the soft tone inks are just lighter. They, they don't, they're not as dark. They're a little bit more brown. So that would be great for flesh um, and stuff like that. You can still put more paint into it, like regular colors. You could add a little bit of red to the soft tone and make it a reddish brown. Um, you would use very little though because it, it changes the color very quickly. So I um, you just got to be careful. But yeah, soft tone paints are definitely for more delicate shadows. Perfect. And then Betty said, is it better to use a brush to pull off the extra or any other painting tool? Um, I like the painting tool, which is my thumb. Works great. Um, it doesn't always work on other areas though. So I, I really do like the brush. Um, uh, my buddy James Wapple uses uh, makeup removers, the little sponges, and he just wipes it down. Um, you know, I would play around with different things. I mean, you know, anything that will soak up paint would work. You just want to make sure it doesn't soak up too much paint. <laughs> yeah. It'd be too, it'd be like a little bit too much there. <clears throat> All right, and then one more. Well, gee, look, good, look. Holy <laughs> cow! Wow! Liz just it was lost just it. Like, <laughs> every word that tried to come out of my mouth was wrong. Okay, let's try this again. One more. <laughs> I got a bottle of Nuln oil. How would you use this? The same way I just did here. So uh, Nuln oil is pretty much black. I added that little bit of uh, burgundy red color into it, which changes the color. It works exactly the same, like literally. In fact, a lot of times I'll use, I do use Nuln oil as, as well. Man, I can't say that word. Um, <laughs> I, I read that and tried to use that as the start of the sentence. Yeah. <laughs> so I've, 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 I use no no oil all the time, and I just add my colors to it however I want. So um, I've even added lighter colors. So they end up being like a, like a light gray instead of black, you know, wash. So you can kind of do whatever you want, um, which is really nice. So... Uh, let me show you real quick. I'm going to do the wash on this gold. I've already got a wash down on it um, that's dry, but I want to show you the wash here since these washes take a little bit of time and I might as well do them all at once. So um, speaking of Citadel washes, um, a great wash for gold would be the Seraphim Sepia. It's more of an orangish brown um, as opposed to the, uh, the, uh, the war paints 
uh, soft tone wash is is just brown. It's not really orangey. You could add a little bit of orange, but this one, it's like it's already a perfect color of orange, so that's why I use it. So we get that, and um, I'm also going to mix up a second color. So you can use multiple washes at once. Um, they all kind of work together. I'm going to use the strong tone ink instead of the uh, dark tone. So the strong tone, I believe, is more black. So I've got that there. That's this one. And then I'm going to grab some of Shadows, uh, the dark stone purple. So purple is a great shadow color for, um, for gold. So they complement each other pretty well. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of that, and you can see it's a really light, lighter shade of purple, but if I put it into the dark tone, or the strong tone, it's now a purpley strong tone, maybe a little bit more. If you end up going too dark, you can always grab some of your black paint and put it back in. So now we have a really dark purple wash, and then we have our seraphim sepia, so our sepia wash. I'm pretty sure if you wanted to stick with Army Painter paints, they have a sepia wash. Pretty much everyone has a sepia wash, but um, okay. So I'm going to start adding these to the gold. So what this will do is it gives it kind of that orangey gold color. So I'm going to put this in kind of strong. The nice thing about it, um, the good thing and bad thing about it is it's not super, it's, it doesn't change the color of your model very much. So you don't have to worry as much about taking it back off. So I'm putting it up here. Trying to make sure it goes down in all the cracks of the lettering and stuff because there's really cool lettering up here. If you can get that to flow down into those, you can actually see the lettering, which is nice. So the whole point of these washes is to bring out detail. So I'm going to put some up here. Some on the top level. I'll go all the way around and I'm trying to go relatively quickly because I want to put another wash on top of this one. And if this one starts drying, it's not going to work quite as well. So, put some down here. You notice I put on a big glob and then I kind of move it around. I think I got it on everything right there. Now I'm going to grab some of this really dark wash and I'm going to put it in some of the lower areas of this gold. So up here I'm going to leave it more sepia wash and down here I'm going to do the purpley wash that we created. And what's cool is because all this is wet hitting each other, they just kind of naturally blend together. That, and I'm going to try to get a little bit more around like these detail pieces right here. Use my finger to wipe some, some of it off. So I feel like I want it to get a little bit darker in this section right here and that section right over there. So it'll be really bright gold up here, really darker down there. So I'm going to add a little bit more of both the purple and the black. I want to make this wash a little bit more opaque. And this is something like, I don't know how much paint I just put in there. I just, I'm, I'll do it. I'll test it. If it works, it's great. If not, I will add some more. But what I want to see it do is start to cover up that gold without doing the washy thing. So that's still pretty thin. So maybe I'll grab just the side of my pool of wash, the big pools right here. I'm putting paint in over here. So it's mostly opaque paint. Put some black in there. Let's see what that looks like. 
All right, so that's that's, that's covering up better. So I made that a little bit darker. I'll do it on this side. Now, another thing you could do is wait for this to dry. But we ain't got time for that, right, Liz? That's right. We gotta go now. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go now. <laughs> Life of a commission painter, right? Yeah. Or if you just simply wouldn't get your models done. <laughs> You're like, I got two hours to paint on a Friday night. That's all I, That's all the time I have. Mm -hmm. We're gonna get this done. Um, so see that made it a little bit darker right in there. Um, if I wanted to, I'd let that dry and maybe put another application just to smooth it out a little bit. But I think that looks pretty good. Maybe even we'll drop some of these way up here again. Just to make all the pieces really sh stand out against each other. Alright. So that's that. That's washing the gold. So we've washed our, our copper. We've washed our gold. Now, I don't know. We're done. No. <laughs> no, we're not. We wanted to look cool. Um, okay, so the copper over here, we can do a couple different things. So um, I've got our bronze up here, and that is um, a little bit too golden looking. So we're going to manipulate that color a little bit too. We want copper is usually when it starts, when it's highlighted, it's more of a peachy color. So I've got this color right here. It's called uh, Vallejo Model Air. It's an airbrush ready paint, but I only use it with paint brushes. It's called aluminum. And this is the lightest silver you can get, I think. It's great for highlighting silver stuff, but it's also great for making a color like this get much lighter. can't see it First on there. First you put it on the... There yeah. we go. There we go. <laughs> Ta-da. We need like a, another light. Like yeah. Right here, just on your or phone. another camera. Or a bigger camera. Yeah. Would my phone work? Uh, I don't know. Let's find out. We'd have to get it. Oh, for the light? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, maybe. No, not really. Not really. Okay, so I'm making kind of a peachy looking color. Maybe I want... Um, I need a reddish color in there. Actually, ooh, we've got this color. So our crimson color. So we're taking all the reds and yellows in here, making them a little bit more red and a really little bit lighter. So that will be our highlight color for the for the um, copper. And um, there's a couple ways we can put this paint on. So I'm going to show you um, sort of a stippling effect with. So basically, I'm taking foam that you get, you know, from packaging and stuff. Um, cut off a little piece of it. Grab a little bit of this, put it off to the corner, and we're going to add some water to it. Not tons of water, but we're just going to make it a little flow a little bit better. Maybe 50-50 paint to water. You got to be careful when, uh, when diluting metallics because they will tend to just turn into glitter, glitter bombs. Um, <laughs> it's not paint anymore. It's just glitter all over the place. Yeah. So, okay. So we've got that color. I'm going to take my sponge and I'm going to kind of dab it in there and you can kind of dab it off on, on your, uh, on a paper towel or what we got going there. Let me move this in closer. See if we can see this. So here's the thing. It's got to show up. If you do a bunch of work and nothing happens, you didn't do anything. So, um, just make sure that the colors are oh, different enough so that you can actually see them. See, I put a little bit in there. It's like really speckly. And I'm going to put this basically up on top. So it's not coming off my sponge real well. So I'm not going to take any of it off. I'm just going to immediately start dabbing it on the model. And this will start giving you sort of a beaten uh, copper look. You can do the same thing with, with uh, silver or bronze or whatever. I'm also trying to mainly put it in highlight areas. So up on the tops of the legs, maybe a little bit on the kneecaps. 
I'm like in right in the center of the shins. But I'm not putting it literally everywhere because I don't want it. I know it's hard to like keep it. I know, especially a big so model big. like this. But I also want you to be able. To, well, I want you to be able to see it, but then I keep going off screen. Yeah. Um, So I'm being really light when I touch too. I'm not I'm not pressing hard like this. You know, I'm not mashing it in. I'm it's just very lightly touching. So gingerly. Gingerly. That. So we'll do yeah, we gotta get his tushy. Yep. So you see that's that's actually creating sort of a highlight effect. And it doesn't really matter that we don't have it down in the shadows. It looks pretty cool. And it goes quickly. Now, if you wanted to have a more beaten look down in the shadows, you could mix up some darker shades of this color and stamp those in too. But I don't, I don't think we need it for right now. I think it's looking pretty cool. This guy definitely worked out before uh, getting made into a statue. Is that what he did? <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Was that in Zoolander? Tushy squeeze. Oh, I have I don't no know. idea. Babe. That was one of those movies. Get that like that. Now we're gonna grab, hopefully our highlight color hasn't uh, dried out. I'm gonna grab some of the highlight color. And this one we're gonna be even more ginger with our application. And just put it basically in highlight areas. So this, this one will take even less. That looks pretty cool actually. Now, if you find that your color is too light, you know, you can always mix in a little bit more of that mid-tone color to it. Maybe it's looking too silver or something. The only problem with adding silver to your metallics is they eventually start looking silver. That's not exactly what we wanted. So we'll do this. I'm going to do right on the tops of the hands here, the arms. Shoulders, the front of the head, maybe a little bit in his face. He worked really hard on that six pack, so we'll give it a little bit of a highlight. Yeah. You know, of course. We're not monsters. No. No. Or are we? It is Halloween time. That one looks really cool. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. So you see, like, this one still looks good. It's just this one's got texture. So depending on what you want with your metallics, um, you can you can add quite a bit this way. And obviously, the more texture you put on, the better it will be. You know, if you just put a very minimal texture, sometimes it looks like you stamped it with a sponge. Um, if you don't want that look, maybe thin your paints out a little bit more and do more um, more variations of color. So I'd do, you know, I'd have like three shades of my mid-tone color, I'd have three shades of my highlight color, maybe a couple shades of, of a shadow color, and then that will give me a much more complex um, looking metal. Which a lot of metal is very complex when you look at it. So, okay, we got that. Let me grab some more of that mid-tone color. And sometimes when you start mixing back and forth between highlight and midtone, it creates an even newer color. It's like in between the highlight and midtone. So um, definitely a very cool way of doing your metallics like that. All right. Hey, look, that's dried. So let's 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 add some more purple. Go. This is why I always work on a like an entire piece. Um, like I kind of got the bricks roughed in. I could start adding. Um, different tones and shades to them because while I'm waiting for other stuff to dry, I can work on the brick. So I'm always working on multiple parts or multiple models at the same time. So we'll put that in like that. Put way bigger shadow than I want. And then I'll start outside of the shadow and kind of work my way back in. And then maybe drag the rest of the paint up the corner. So that gives me a better shadow right there. 
Um, it's still wet down here, so there's no reason. I would like this to be a little more shadowed, but there's no reason to do it right now because it's just too wet. Um, we'll do this one here. It's a little bit wet, but let's see if we can pull it off. So we've got that in there. We'll start thinning out this edge. Wipe my brush off. Do a little bit more of this off. There we go. So that gives me a nice shadow in there. Pretty cool. Um, maybe we will come back in, do a little bit of the shadows underneath like these pieces right here. So right there, I'm literally just painting it in. I'm not worrying about making a wash or cleaning it off. I'm just putting a ledge of this darker purpley wash right there. Just to give me a little bit more shadow right in that area. Do the side. Cool. And I can do right up here. I'll go like halfway up. And then with my clean brush, pull it up the rest of the way. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So I'm I'm got my one brush applying the color. Go about three quarters of the way up. Grab my clean brush and just kind of pull it up the rest of the way. That gives me a good strong dark line right there. So that looks pretty cool. Um, I would like to. Uh, now that I've got uh, more definition on this on this one, um, I'm going to grab more of my red. I think we put purple in there, which I didn't really want. But that's okay. These are for the deep dark shadows on the on the on the uh, copper. So we'll just make a really really dark reddish color. Again, it doesn't have to be specific. It's just very, very dark. It's not quite black, but it's close. Um, and what we'll do is I'm going to put some right down here in between the legs. So what I'm trying to do is darken that area right between the legs a little bit more. Bring it all the way up. Then take my clean brush and wipe away right at the top of it. So it kind of just goes from really dark and then slowly gets lighter even though it's all really dark in there so getting a little bit more contrast in there um, I can do the same thing these he's got little wings um, so I'm gonna put a little bit more of that darkness right there wipe away at the top come back down so basically it gets very dark right before it hits the body And if you notice, all these colors are all basically they're washes, but they're they're between washes and opaque colors. There's no more. I'm not painting more metallics on in the, on the shadowing part. On all the highlights, it's all metallics with a little bit of a little bit of regular paint mixed in. Um, let's do right here. Using a nice. Uh, fine pointed brush. This is a Raphael 8404 size zero. Um, very good point on it. And we can just kind of do some little dark lining here. Yep, so you see Liz just loves it when I dark line stuff. I do. I don't <laughs> well, know. It's, it's, it's very satisfying because yeah. everything comes into focus. Like, yeah. You can see it really easily. But also, it's really cool to watch you. Like, you have such a steady hand when you do it. As opposed to, like, when I'm doing the base coats, and it's like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. And do y'all have any questions? Like, yet? Any answers? <laughs> Am I doing it wrong? <laughs> that would be really funny. That would be funny. So I'm just going to pick out a few areas right here that I'm going to do a little bit more dark line. It doesn't have to be everywhere. Obviously, we don't want to spend forever working on this. Um, let's go around these hands. will be very dark. Maybe in between the fingers. A little bit there.
I think that looks pretty cool. What do you think, Liz? I think it looks great. All right. Might just be the beer talking, but I think this is oh, fantastic. No. <laughs> Bless it. All right. Okay. So that looks pretty cool. Um, now for copper. Uh, oh, you know what? I'm going to show you the copper way to do this side, the, a different copper way. So um, we are going to take some of that mid-tone color, and I'm going to dry brush it on. So I'm using this particular one is from Monument uh, Pro Synthetic. Uh, it's a DD2. It's a dry brush, basically. Um, and so I'm I'm not wiping the paint off as much as I normally would. So it's a little bit wet on there, but mostly wiped off. But you do smush it into... Yeah. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lightly dry brush this model. Now, I want to dry brush downwards so that I don't push any highlights into the shadows. So all my dry brushes are going to be sort of in this direction or, you know, kitty corner. But I don't want to come up from the bottom. This is kind of picking out some little details. Um, if you wanted to, you could do the same thing over here, just to sort of smooth things out just a little bit. This also helps. Sometimes the when you when you when it's the beaten look, um, it's a little bit too beaten, <laughs> and so you can actually smooth it out a little bit with a little bit of dry brushing. So I've grabbed a little bit more paint, putting some on. If it seems like it's coming off heavy, I move to another section, and I just keep getting rid of paint and then when it gets to the point where I'm running out of paint on my brush I can come back in and re-hit areas kind of smooth them out a little bit and as I really start running out of paint I can get some of these bottom areas get a little bit more of this you can also test on your finger um, you see I get a lot of paint on my fingers um, just to make but sure like that there's color. not, yeah, make sure there's not a whole lot of paint on your brush. I never washed the back of this. All right, we'll just do the front. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how come that looks like I'm literally putting the same color on? Um, so you see that the, our wash made it all darker. This dry brush makes it a little bit lighter. I'm going to grab from our highlight color now. And this will go only in the brightest areas I want. So like forehead and on face. The, the there we go. Our forehead and our face. Maybe the tops of these hands, tops of the shoulders. And maybe that's about it. What about them feet? You don't dry brush no feet. Also, there's wet paint down there, so I, I, I can't. Yeah, okay. um, if you wanted to lightly dry brush the feet, you can. But you see that I have wash down there. And if I dry brush in there, it'll make my brush wet, and now my dry brushing is done. So <laughs> don't want to do that. Once you wet your brush, the brush is finished. I will clean mine off because I have another dry brush. So um, we should be okay. Now, we've got that. Um, if you wanted to go one more step with your, uh, with your highlights, uh, let's grab, so I've got this color, do our silver. Or aluminum and then maybe a little bit of this red to make it a little bit more peachy what we're going to do here and this is another one where you want to be kind of minimal but we can grab uh, with a nice tiny brush I'm going to use this this is a Russian brush that no one can get so um, <laughs> but it's a size zero so if you have like a size zero like teeny tiny brush or double zeros, double ones, that type of thing, um, I would use that. So with this, we can come in and just hit little bitty highlights that we wanna like make a little bit brighter. Um, while you're making them highlights brighter, we have a question. Okay. Uh, so Mike says, for metallic, is it better to use highlights to get the detail on the face or washes? Um, but you can do both. 
Um, a lot of people rely more on their washes than their highlights because metallics are just a little bit hard to work with. But if you're using a tiny brush and you just are very patient, you can actually bring out a lot of highlights with your metallics um, as opposed to just using washes. So um, I think you should use, uh, you should actually put highlights in. But if you're not confident enough, that's, it's okay that you don't. I mean, you can get away with a lot with the wash. But if you notice here, I'm not making major highlights. I'm picking out certain areas, like the top of the ear, maybe the bottom of the ear. Just a little highlight down there. Um, maybe I'll put a little bit of one on the corner of the cheek, like maybe around the cheek right there on both sides. It's kind of just like painting a face, except you're not using a bunch of colors. You're just using metallics. Um, so you see right here, I could probably come back in and redefine some of these areas with washes. So you're going to go back and forth, I think. That was too much paint on my brush. That was a lot of paint. That was. Just wipe it off. Start over. From scratch? No, hopefully not. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, that would stink. <laughs> We're starting the class over. <laughs> Wasn't that, like, that would be a really... Terrible thing is that if you had one wrong brush stroke, uh -huh. and then you had to start over. Was that would like, like like if you were doing your uh, uh, airbrushing one of four class and you ruined the figure yeah, on the first spray. It right in the face. Yeah. Screw People who have taken my classes would understand that joke, but. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So we just kind of get. I'm grabbing just a little wash at a time, so I'm basically just painting it in, maybe around these eyes, around the nose. Um, he's got this little divot right there in his face, between the cheek and his mouth. And basically, you can keep doing this till you get it to where you want it. You know, if it's uh, dark enough or bright enough or whichever way you want to go, as much detail as you want. You just got to keep add it to get it to look right. And we'll go. Another great place for a highlight, like a really strong highlight, would be right on this collar right here because it's fairly dark. And if it doesn't seem like it's showing up, it might need to be lighter. So I'm just going to mix some more of the aluminum in there. be nice and bright and sparkly. Metallics are weird too because sometimes they, you know, they'll show up in photographs or they won't show up at all in photographs. So you got to be really careful with them. But if you do it right, you put enough shadows and stuff in. That's why I always do my shadows with opaque paints um, or washes because it gets rid of the metallic shine basically or most of it. So then when you're turning the model, like in the shadows, it's just shadow. And in the highlight areas, it's, it's like mega highlights because you got all metallic paint. You see, when I get outside the lines, I just wipe it off real quick. Just be careful not to reapply it somewhere else in the model. To yeah. Which is what I'm probably doing right now, yeah. but that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that I like to do is put, maybe this is a good opportunity to put in a couple scratches or something. Maybe one right there. I'll put, um, grab a little bit of my black paint. Maybe make it a little bit deeper scratch. A little scratch right there. So you don't always have to put a dark line for your scratch, but if you want the scratch a little bit deeper, that helps signify that it's a deeper scratch. Otherwise, just using the lighter color will be fine for like superficial scratches. Um, while you're doing your scratches. Right. Uh, Sean wants to know when you 
when you apply washes, do you use your good brushes? Um, yeah, I do. It, it depends. Like I applied mine with, I think, my Raphael, mm -hmm. and then I wiped it. But I'm always wiping it off with a hobby brush. Hobby brushes soak up the paint a lot better. Um, but, I mean, you could very easily, like if you're doing a long session of washes, it might be a better idea to use a hobby brush to apply it. You don't need a good, like a super good brush to apply a wash. So, um, you know, I usually use whatever brush is in front of me. But if I have like a big job, I'll probably use my hobby brushes because I know some of that paint will start drying in the brush. And I don't want that to happen on my good brushes. So I'm just trying to pick out some of these top edges of things. I won't do them all because we'll be here all night, but um, mm -hmm. I'll do some of them. That's starting to look kind of cool. If you mess up and make it too bright, you can always put the wash back over it again. You can always recover from a mistake, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Too thick. Some darker, deeper scratches right here. Get that one. Just remember the dark line always goes on top of the highlight because the highlight's always underneath on scratches. Do a little bit more highlights up here. The hips. Good rule of thumb is anywhere where it kind of bows out it would be a good place for a highlight. There's obviously more places than that, but just getting started, that's, uh, you know, when you're dry brushing, it will pick out those top, those little lumps. So you want to do the same thing with your paintbrush if you can. Make it like that. This is actually we we actually got this at Gen Con where this is this is this is for our game. So it's kinda yeah, cool. Zach said earlier that he has this exact thing right. sitting on his desk that's been there for a little over a year. And these are the exact colors he's been planning on painting. That's them. cool. You know what's funny is I remember Zox showing me that in our private coaching session a little over a year ago. <laughs> It's almost like I pay attention, huh? Right? Yep. Oh, that was weird. What's that? Oh, all three of my monitors just went black. Oh, that's yeah. exciting. No, not not the word I use. My heart almost gave out. <laughs> like we don't have any visuals. No, I got scared because I thought the call dropped. Oh, well, that would be bad, too. Yeah, but, that's when I was scared. Okay. Whatever. No I'll, ke I'll keep talking. It's fine. Oh, we know. <laughs> well, luckily, I am recording this. Um, I know, I know. So, it would, it would all work out, but... Oh, we jumped to my profile picture, but then the video quickly returned. Uh, weird. Very weird. Okay. I could be here all night, but that looks pretty good for now. Um, shoot. We gotta do one more thing. Sorry. The kneecaps. I mean, this is actually a really enjoyable model to paint. Um, so maybe we will just finish it up tonight. No, I'm just kidding. Um, oh everyone's like, no, we got to get to the other colors. So I'm kind of following the highlights that are already happening naturally. I'm just off my lights. I'm kind of just trying to put a little bit of that highlight color right in there. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Obviously, if you're entering a competition, it does. But for now, I think that's good enough. Now, we've got to weather this thing. So, um, what is co how does copper weather? Does anybody know? It's a different kind of rust. Anyone? All right. 
I'm tired of waiting. Vertigree. Vertigree. Vertigo. Good job, Bill and Betty. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Okay, so I'm using some teal. Um, the one I chose was marine teal. It could be any teal. This is marine teal from uh, uh, Reaper. And I need to grab a little bit of it on my palette, make a new puddle. I'm going to grab a little bit of black, and I'm going to make it really, really dark. So our first color is like dark teal. Perfect. So remember how we applied our, our uh, and I'll start over here. I'll do it a little bit on both, but um, remember how we applied our um, wash? We put it on and wiped it off. We're going to do the same thing with this. So like all these techniques um, sort of are applied the same way. So uh, you always want to have places where water might uh, congregate or where it gets you know, where it pulls up or something, that'd be a good place for verdigree. But if you look at rep reference photos, and I encourage you to look at reference photos, sometimes verdigree can be anywhere on a statue. So, um, you know, just pick and choose your spots. Um, if it looks cool, that's all the better. So I'm going to put a big old blop of it right there. Let's get in closer. Again. What is it? A blop? A blop. It's a technical term us painters mm -hmm. use. And I'm going to erase that outside edge. See that? It doesn't look too different, but this is a very important stage because you need you need it to get be that dark, dark teal color. I'm gonna put some over here. Put some right there. I'm gonna go. The paint's still wet down here. That's another reason I don't like washes too much, but they, you need to use them sometimes. Um, they just take forever to dry. So I'm gonna put some down between the legs. That looks cool. Um, put in this joint right there. I'm gonna put some on top of this arm because I think water would really collect right in here. So there'd probably be a lot of verdigree right in that area. Someone's gonna be a verdigree expert and they're gonna be like, no, that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. That's the way I think it works, so good enough, right? So obviously we don't want this everywhere because if we put verdigree everywhere, we have verdigree nowhere. So, um, you know, you want to put it in a bunch of spots, but not too much. Um, let's do some up by this hand here. Sometimes the spots can be very small. That's okay. I love making my statues cry. So, I mean, who doesn't, right? I'm gonna put some in right by the eye there and I'm gonna pull it down the face. So this is the dark part. You don't you can't see it real well, but it's there. Put some in the back of the head here. Because the back of the head's kind of uninteresting. So maybe we make a big old splotch of vertigree back here. Cool. He doesn't have any feet. I've been trying to tell you that. No, he does okay. have feet. Let's put some in the feet for Liz. Thanks. Well, because that's where the water would pull. It's right by his feet. Kind of. It might run right past the feet. But yes, there would be. I mean, there would literally be vertigree all over the place. I've seen pictures where it's literally covered. The whole statue is covered in vertigree. So you don't want to do that, though, because that's kind of boring. It's Bush League. That's what they call over it. There. Over the top. Kind of made him look like he has hair. Like it's teal hair. Yeah, that would actually be kind of cool. What's it called when they just have hair on the back side of their head? Monkish. Like a monk. No. <coughs> no. All right, I'll put some at the bottom of his chin here. There, we give him a five o'clock shadow. <laughs> <laughs> Super cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So now I'm going to add more of my teal to that darker color. And now instead of doing the blending thing, 
uh, verdigris oftentimes is like kind of it's uh, the metals like oxidizing. It's becoming the powder. So I like to kind of stipple it in. It doesn't have to be stippled in. You could blend it in if you wanted to, but I think it looks good stippled. And you're going to put this in a smaller area than you put the big part of the dark teal. So you want a little bit of that dark teal showing up, and then you want this lighter teal down here. You can put a couple layers, like as they dry, you can go back to the other layers and hit them again. This is the part that will actually really start showing up. I'm going to push this all the way down. This one, it's hard to get in there. So I will put it in and I'll kind of wipe away little outside edges. So like the, the vertigree is kind of running out of that crack right there. Um, we'll put a little bit up here. Sometimes it pays to put just a little bit of paint on your brush. You can put it in areas you didn't even put some of the darker vertigree. So just little bits like that. Put this. I think the hardest part about this is being random. Um, you're going to want to, I know for myself, I have the tendency to want to make everything ordered. And, you know, there's three dots evenly spaced on this leg. You can't do that. It's got to be all over the place. So what I do is I try not to think about it, and I start just sort of dotting and dabbing. Got to get the wiggle hands. Yeah, you got to get some wiggle with your giggle right there. Um, but then it starts looking very, very random. I'll put a little bit on the leg right there. Um, I'll put some higher up here. Get a little bit more right in the crook of this arm. Now if I can get this paint to soak down in the crack and leave most of the pigment right there, it will look really, really good. It'll almost be like a dark line, but with teal. Here, right there. Um, get up in his face. We want that, that teardrop to be really accentuated. So we'll put some right in the crack of his eye right there. Being real light with my touch. I'm gonna put a big old blop right there. Take my clean brush and kind of pull it down the face. It's not really working very well, so I'm just going to try to paint it in. It's a sad, sad panda statue. Hmm. All right, so we'll do some over here, Maybe right around the ear. I should have made this like a six hour class and just painted the whole thing. Now I want to paint the whole thing. I know you want to, but we can't paint the whole thing. You don't understand. We can't paint the whole thing in class. <laughs> I just want to do vertigree, okay? All right. So every once in a while I go back and smooth it out a little bit, but I am trying to be a little bit more textured with my application. A little bit like that. We'll do this, his chin here. That maybe we'll put a little bit up here. I do a lot of what I call insisting. If you take my classes, my online classes, um, I do insisting on color. So that just means painting the exact same color over and over again, especially if it's a really vibrant color. Because what that will do is it starts building up the opacity of that color and it really shows up like down there. So you see each time it dries, it dries a little bit duller. So I'm trying to come back in and put another layer on. And this will also add to the randomness because I'm still stippling it in, but I'm not putting it directly over what I did before. So it's just kind of very, very random. Like 
that, a little bit more on the chin here, a little bit more right up here. So this was our second color application. We did the dark teal, and now we're doing pretty much straight up teal. And then what do we do? We need some white. So I'm gonna grab, oh, I do actually have the shadows white. It's a little bit, you'll notice, it's a little bit thicker coming out of the bottle, and I like that. I actually like my paints real thick. So we've got the white right here. We'll thin out our color to kind of almost a mint green or mint blue. Is there a mint blue? I don't know. I don't know. But I know it's a, maybe a little hard to see in the call itself. Yeah. But uh, the recording will have much clearer. Super crystal clear video. So now I'm putting it in an even smaller spot. And this is the same thing. I'll apply it and maybe I'll come back and apply it again a couple times just to get it completely opaque in spots. Put some right there. Put some up here. You can put it on and take it off with your finger so it's like half of that color. That looks cool. Some right here, maybe some more right there. I'm gonna wipe this off, kind of blend it a little bit. Sean said that mint blue is now a thing. Yeah. It's now a color. Mm -hmm. Believe. Trust. Trust. What movie did that come from? Those two sayings, believe and trust. Are you asking them or are you asking me? I know what, you know where it came yeah. from. Acquiring minds want to know. Get a reaper to make the mint blue. Yeah. Lovejoy's mint blue. So here's one thing you can do too, like on this head. I'm I'm applying the color, dabbing it off with my finger, and then apply it again. And I just keep dabbing it off. It's like one, two, buckle my shoe, right? For the definition of insanity. <laughs> well, no, because put it, it on, take it off. Put it on, take it off. <laughs> <laughs> Stop making fun of me. I'm just kidding. No, it actually does build up over time. It's just it, it kind of makes it so it doesn't look like you painted it. It just looks like it's there. And that's real. Ryan lost his, jumped into the pool with his cell phone. Now he doesn't have a cell phone. Something like that. Maybe we'll put, I love doing vertigree on faces because you can get really awkward with it. Like maybe there's some vertigree in his ear. <laughs> That's what that. That's where you designed to put it. Yep. Perfect. There we go. That looks awesome. Yeah. You notice the this. Looks great. That's right. Oh, Michael Peterson. It's from the movie Attack the Block. Yeah. Such a good movie. It's about aliens. And uh, London gangsters. Can't beat it. All right, so let's do some let's do some really strong vertigree down here. So we might as well. Oops, got some on that rock. <laughs> Those rocks are vertigree. That looks cool. So you also notice the really bright colors look great way down where the where the paint's darker. So you can keep that in mind too. Sometimes you can strategically put some really bright areas in the darkness and it looks really good. There, got that. 
Watch this. I'm going to put some on and I'm just going to take it off. Betty said it deposited on the rocks from falling off the statue. There we go. If the statues were like the angled like that, maybe <laughs> it's a little bit far away from the statue. But yeah, I do that all the time. I make up some story as to why I messed up and it's right. Yep. Sean said that mint blue is popping. It is. So a little bit of color theory here. The more saturated your color is, the more it will show up. That's why, like, if you notice, this gold shows up way better than our copper because it is more yellow. It's more saturated yellow colors, and the copper is more like a darker red, so it just doesn't show up as well. This mint color is very, very saturated, and I purposely didn't make it too white. You know, you put more white in it, and all of a sudden it desaturates it, and it's not as good anymore. So, um, so remember that when you're trying to make something pop, or you're trying to, you know, uh, make something look better for the tabletop, uh, put a little bit more saturated color into it. How far do we have to go? Oh, I have no idea. I don't oh. think there was actually a... A time limit? A oh, time good. We're going to go all us. night long. I don't care. I know you care. <laughs> I do. I we actually have, we have uh, airbrushing classes tomorrow, so we, we have to prep for that tonight, too. So can't go all night, but we can go almost all night. Almost all night. Socks that I'll put some coffee on. Yeah. We as long as we are awake tomorrow... Yes, Betty, that's exactly right. A little bit like that. Yeah. That looks pretty cool. Okay, so now we've got to do um, our gold and we've got to do silver. So let's start on the silver first. Um, we're going to do the exact same thing. So we've got, I've just base coated, uh, these are some of the coffin breaker models um, that I've put together for my own set. Um, and I'm the only one in the world who has them, <laughs> except for the people at Flying Frog. Um, so what I need for this, and we need a couple of extra colors. So I'm going to use this desert yellow. It's an ochre. And I really like ochre colors. It's like a yellowish brown. We've got that. We're also going to need a shadow. So um, I'm going to use this dark flesh. So I have like a dark brown. And let's put it, I'm going to mix it into our Seraphim Sepia wash, which was this stuff from Citadel. You could also do it in the soft tone ink. I just don't have my soft tone ink anymore. I don't know where it went. I might have used it all up. I think you used it all, and then we and then we forgot to get didn't you get any more when we were at, <laughs> when we were at Gen Con. That happens. Okay, so we're making a really really dark wash, kind of. And again, I'm gonna start putting. So on this on this uh, shovel. It's angled backwards, so I think it would look better with the shadow at the top. So right up here, right under the lip of it. Oh, I just threw my brush. Did you get it? Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna put it right there. Wipe it off. It's a little bit too, too much wash, so let's Grab some of that wash and put it over here so I can make a thicker version. So we'll do that. Grab some of my brown. See how it's starting to make it shadowed at the, at the top? Um, I'm going to put some all over this bottom part and then wipe it off. So let's just, let's use the, the finger technique. So I wiped off a bunch of that wash, and we'll let that dry. Um, this side definitely needs wash in the back part here. And we'll 
I'll just wipe it off with my finger again. So I'm always trying to find like the quickest way to do something. Even sometimes it doesn't even matter if it's like a display figure. I will do the same thing. I'm just more careful when I do my next steps um, to clean it all up. But just because you're going fast doesn't mean it'll be bad. So we got that on there. Let me get this ax. Um, so we've got the ax and these little plates right over here. So I'm just gonna cover this up completely with the wash and then use my paintbrush to kind of pull it back off a little bit. Like that, pull it back off. Maybe even do a little bit around it. So right on the, on the wood planks. Again, wipe away the outside edge. Put that all back there, wipe it away. And we'll do this ax, I think it would look cool if it was shadowed up by where the ax meets the handle. So we'll do this. Wipe that away, wipe this away a little bit. So put it on, take it off. that. I don't know why I sometimes whisper when I'm painting. <laughs> I, and you just put it on like this. <laughs> so weird. He, it's super weird when we're trying to watch a movie and he's like sitting in the kitchen trying to You're paint and I just hear him whispering to himself. To myself. Yeah. Kind of weird but yeah. we'll, you know just go with it. It's cool. my imaginary friend. All right, so we've kind of made a couple shadows in there. I think that looks cool. Part of this is like when, when you're painting, you might be like, how did you know to put shadows right there or whatever? It was an educated guess over years of failure. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's just one of those things where you kind of got to, you got to do it a few times and you get better at where your placement is, you know? Every single model is different. Every, you know, I might highlight the next, next axe uh, completely differently because it's it's angled different. So, you know, it, it, it kind of is one of those things that you just got to practice and get better at. That's where that that's where the art comes in. Your your color placement. We will be talking about light and stuff and colors uh, on Sunday. So definitely be back for that. But uh, but yeah, some of this is just educated guesses. Good educated guesses. Sometimes I guess wrong, but. All right, so that's like that. Let's do a little bit more up here. I want a little bit of shadow all the way around those brackets there on the wood. Okay, that looks pretty cool. All right, so we got that. Um, you can do one of two things. You can either highlight first and do uh, rust or rust first and do highlight. So I think we're going to start with the rust because sometimes uh, you, don't want, you don't want the rust covering up your final highlights. Um, so to do the rust, I need my ochre color, which is that one right there. And I'm going to add a bunch of water to it. Probably 50-50, maybe a little bit more than 50-50. Man, I got black in that paint already. All right, let's try this again. Put it over here. So this pile right there, I'm gonna add a little bit of water, thin it out. And this part is basically, this starts the aging process of the silver. Um, if I put that on like this, Maybe I thin that too much. Every color will thin differently, so you just gotta make sure that, that 
uh, you test it, see if it works, and then just continue on. I'm gonna put this on. I'm gonna go, kind of put this all over the place, even wiping it off sometimes. Put some up here. You can even do the two brush thing. Put it on, take it off. Um, other other colors that work really good are like uh, Vallejo has uh, Japanese uniform is a good one. Um, there's English uniform, and then also Citadel has Baylor Brown, which is a which is a good ochre as well. So if you got any of those colors, those are really good colors for this. So basically, what we've done here is we're we're creating the tarnishing that happens on metal. Um, it starts turning a little bit yellowish. And then it goes. And then it goes all rusty on us. So we got that. Um, this is my favorite rust color of all time, Mornfang Brown from Citadel. Let's grab that. So it's a very orangey brown. And what I'm going to do again? I'm doing the same exact thing. I'm going to have my wiper offer brush. I'm going to put a little blob down here or a big blob, and then I'm gonna wipe it away, but leaving just a little bit of it showing. That looks really cool. The back edge of this, uh, of this shovel would be more rusted than the front edge because um, back there doesn't get scraped off. When they're shoveling dirt and stuff, that this side actually gets cleaned. So sometimes think about those things when you're doing rust and stuff. That looks cool. There might be a little bit. I mean, these can be really old, uh, really old shovels. So maybe having a little bit in the middle of the blade is okay too. It's a little bit rusty like that. Go down to the bottom part, the handle, put a bunch on, take it off. Sometimes it puts paint back on your brush so you can put that in other spots. Just like this. Oops. Maybe I'll come back in and, and insist on that color a little bit. So I have like little bits, just little pockets that are pure Mornfang Brown. The brush is kind of splaying out there. A little bit rusty like that. Let's put um let's put a highlight on. So I'm just gonna grab my um, aluminum color, which was over here, the Vallejo Model Air aluminum, because it is very very bright and shiny. And with this, instead of putting a line across the whole top of this shovel, um, I'm gonna kind of dot it in, so it looks very like not smooth. Like that. Um, there's a couple scratches in the shovel itself, so let's see if I can hit those. A little highlight on there. Let's put, let's dot in a couple highlights on the top of this part. And down here. That, I think that looks pretty cool. What do you think, Liz? I think it looks great. She's like, I don't know, I wasn't paying attention. No. <laughs> I mean, yeah, cool. you see this every day. I do. So we'll put in a couple more highlights from this angle, from this viewing angle. that and then sometimes with uh, the older the rust gets 
the darker it gets. And it actually can get a little purpley. So I'm going to grab some of that purple wash. Remember we made it for the, the uh, gold? Maybe put that up into some of my shadow areas up here. I don't want it to look purple. I just want it to be tinted purple. I think that looks cool. Do some down here. If there's anything in your painting that I would really encourage you to doing is experimenting. Um, I know sometimes that means a failed paint job, <laughs> but um, I think the more you experiment, the more you start finding really cool ways of highlighting and shadowing things and stuff like that. So um, I think that looks pretty cool. Let's do a real quick, real quick um, weathering job of this cross down here. Put the first color on. that we'll grab our highlight color try to hit my brush stroke really really light just barely get the edge there. That looks pretty cool. All right. Nice and shiny. Yep. Okay, so we've got, uh, we did uh, rust. Oh, you know what? Sometimes on rust, really new rust would be much more orange. So I'm gonna put a little bit of orange on my palette. Maybe we'll mix that in with some of this Mornfing Brown to make what like... What color orange was that? It was the, from the Shadows of Brimstone, the okay. Molten Orange. Thanks. And this, again, we're going to kind of dot it in. So we're just going to put it in real small areas at the back of this blade. You want to progressively get smaller with your application of color here. Um, a little bit right here. You can just make little bitty dots. That works well. So if you want really, really fresh rust, you do a lot of orangey rust. If you want really old rust, like if this was, if this truly wasn't a graveyard and been sitting there for years and years and years and not being touched, these shovels would probably be almost black. That's like, that's, they'd have really old rust on them. But that's not exciting uh, for a paint job. So I think having them silver with a little bit of rust looks a lot better. And then you can also use that same rust concoction um, to shade like some of these wood planks and stuff. So that way we kind of tie all our colors together. So I'm using that second brush to sort of feather it out. Just do a little bit down here at the bottom. Maybe even on that board. This is a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> bonus footage right bonus. here. Bonus? Yeah. Get it? No pun intended. Cool. Get some more here. Right there, wipe it across. Boom, boom, boom. That's coming together. Use some of the same rust for his dirt on his clothing. Because on clothing, it's not rust anymore, it's just dirt. But it's the same color, so it kind of ties everything together. But right there, perfect. All right, so um, what time do we got there, Liz? It is 9.30. All right, we're actually doing pretty good. Um, 
Oh, let me do this. This uh, this one. This goes very quickly. So I love weathering things. Um, shadows, my shadows, all the box art I do for them has some element of weathering in it always because I just think it adds life to you know a piece. It makes it look like it's been used, um, especially stuff that's down the mine shafts and stuff. Definitely needs, definitely needs some weathering. Go like that. Just a little bit here, a little bit there. Some really orangey tones under here. And then we can go our dark tone. You just want to make sure you don't go so fast that, that colors aren't dry. <laughs> then you have problems there. Get a little bit more of this one thing brown. See, if I'm careful and I only touch the outside edge of that puddle of paint, the inside stays opaque, the outside edge gets blurred. And that's what I want. I'll do this one. A little bit of orangey. There we go. Sometimes instead of edge highlighting, you can edge rust light. <laughs> Cool. Get a little bit more of our um, aluminum color. Like that, maybe do a couple little scratches. Boom, boom, boom. Sweet. I think that's pretty good for the gaming table. Perfect. Nice. Okay, so now we're gonna work on that gold. Um, the gold, the gold doesn't rust. So, sorry to say, we're completely done. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so if you notice too, I, I'm on purpose, you can see where some of the gold doesn't, it's a little bit streaky. It's not perfect. Got it on back here. It's a little bit blotchy in areas. Even when I did my washes, it's a little bit blotchy. And I kind of want that because when you have older metal, um, it's not perfect. So having a little bit of my base coat show through, one, it, it saves me from having to put eight coats of gold on this to try to get it opaque. Um, but also it just makes it look more real in the end. So I'm going to grab... So I did the wash on this one. This one just had... A, I used strong tone wash and purple in it. Um, the front one was uh, the Griffin Sepia uh, with a little bit... Of, and then some purple with strong tone to get the darker colors. So it's a little bit different. Grab... So the key here is you don't want any um, when my bottles get clogged, I just open them up like this. So much easier. All right. So you don't want any water to get in your paint. So um, this is it's on my wet palette here, but um, 
I'm using like parchment paper so no water comes through. So should be okay. Now I'm gonna use this big Morphe brush. Um, see, I put it right in the center there. And I'll just dry brush. It's so again, kind of on the upper edges of things. I didn't, I didn't paint this thing because I, I knew that I'd be hitting it with dry brush. So um, sometimes you gotta do things in a particular order. If you know you're gonna have to dry brush an area, don't paint the areas around it because it's gonna get dry brushing all over it. What was that? I don't know. That was weird. <laughs> I'm reloading my brush and then taking some of the paint out. Kind of hitting all over in this spill area, but that might actually help me later on. So I can paint over it and I'll actually have that, that gold kind of showing through. I like that. Kind of builds in a highlight there. So you can see as I turn it, some angles it just reflects completely, but as I turn it, you can kind of see where the gold is starting to uh, highlight the raised areas or the edges. That Put a little bit more. Now we're going to add a little bit more. We're going to add some silver to that gold. So let's put some more gold on my palette. I might just have to pour it on. Bloop. Perfect. All right. So we're gonna add silver into that. As you drop the so paint I drop my on paint the floor. To kind of make a highlight. And the only problem with this is it starts becoming silver. So what we can do is I can add a little bit of yellow to it. So cinder yellow. You can always add opaque colors to your italics. Right. I think that will work. Clean out that brush. Grab my dry brush again. And if y'all have any questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A box. Yeah, definitely at the ask. Of the screen. Everybody's so quiet tonight. I know. It's Friday night, everyone's like partying. <clears throat> Half asleep. Oh, yeah, yeah, or that. Or feverishly painting away. Yeah. Getting their contest entries ready. Hopefully. We get to judge those. Yeah, we do. It's gonna be fun. You guys better order it and enter something. Yeah. said one day I'll be good enough to join a competition. Everyone is good enough to join a competition at any point. Yeah, you just might not win at first, but, but I think okay. it's good to participate just to, you know, kind of see where you're at. And it, like for me, it always motivated me to try to, you know, get better and not be so bad. <laughs> so at first I was pretty, it was pretty rough. He still has his very first miniature. I do. It was... The best miniature I've ever painted. Very sad. It was oh, a very that, sad that miniature. Too. I remember showing it to my mom. I was like 30 years old. And I showed it... <laughs> I, sh I took it over to my parents' house. And I was like, check this out. And my mom was like, that is very good. She was probably thinking, 
Great. My 30-year-old son is playing with dolls. No. Your mom was probably like, well. She, she went to my dad and she's like, this is something. what happens when you play at with. At least he's doing something. <laughs> All those toy soldiers used to play with Aaron with. No. I, I absolutely adored my upbringing that way. It's very cool. Oh, awesome. Bill said that he's got one in for Monster and Hero. The weekend goes well, maybe an open. Nice. Always participate. It's great for feedback. Yes, exactly. Okay. And, yeah, Michael, Aaron always likes to show his mom his work. It's absolutely precious. Because my mom has no clue what she's looking no, at. No, but she praises you. <laughs> I know. It's the sweetest thing. It's pretty. It's it's awesome. She's she's an awesome person. Yeah. Well, he said that he does it with his mom, too. Yeah. All right, so once I get the dry brushing on, I can come back in and maybe with a little bit even lighter color, uh, do some final little edge highlights. If it shows up. I was gonna say that did not show up at all. It made it look wet. Yeah. All right, let's just do almost straight silver. I, I try to avoid going full on silver just because it ends up looking silver, but sometimes you just got to. Okay. See, as I, as I turn it in the light, you can start catching those areas where I made it lighter, brighter highlight. Just kind of got to be patient. You know, all of these steps, you could have done the wash step and been done. You could have done the wash and then the dry brush and been done. Or you just keep going with continual steps and, you know, just make it. It all depends on how much time you want to put in. Now, if I'm doing studio figures, I'm being a little bit, probably a little bit more careful than I'm being right now because I'm just trying to go quick and get this done um, so you can see it. But you definitely want to take your time. But, you know, speed is a thing, too. And if you're, like, super, super slow at painting your miniatures, you're never going to get them done. I mean, Shadows has so many figures. Um, you really got to buckle down, find some ways to, to go a little bit faster with things. I think this is actually looking pretty cool though. Actually, the this looks awesome, just dry brushed gold. Mm -hmm. Who knew? Did Not you know I. this? You didn't know? Um, I didn't know. Michael asked, what first got you into miniature painting? I lost a bet. That's not true. I'm just kidding. Um, I was actually, so growing up, my dad um, bought us the little Britons toy soldiers. I don't know if you remember those, but they were uh, 170 second, or they were 54 millimeter, basically, um, 135th scale. And we called them metal soldiers, but they were actually plastic. They just had a metal base. And he bought a bunch of Civil War soldiers one year for Christmas. And we could, you could get them at the local toy shops. I don't know if they sell them at toy shops anymore, but you could get them at Disneyland and at uh, uh, Toys Etc. in the UTC Mall. <laughs> and um, so I started by playing with those, and he made a he made like a diorama battlefield that we'd play, that we'd war game on, and we didn't know that there was actual war games. It was just that's what we did. So we made a game out of a deck of playing cards. It was super slow, but it was super fun, and so that's kind of where I started. And I you know he'd have me make you know model tanks and helicopters and 
B-52 bombers and all that stuff. And then, um, then I discovered girls and skateboards, and that all disappeared for 15 years. And one day I was at the mall, and um, or I, I went into a, a game store, and I didn't even know there was game stores, you know? Um, and so we went in there, and they had some Warhammer Fantasy models out on a table. A guy was painting them. And I, I thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. And so then I realized I started looking up game stores and stuff in San Diego, and I found a bunch of game, you know, a couple other big game stores. Went in there, and they had really cool stuff, and that's kind of what got what got me into it. The rest is history. That and I kept killing myself on my skateboard, so I needed a new hobby. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I didn't even know that there was wargaming or, you know, D&D figures or anything. I was just completely oblivious to it. Um, and then when I found them, it was like, whoa, this is the coolest thing ever. So I kind of pick out some of these little cracks and crevices that are sculpted in here. Daniel did a really good job sculpting this. Um, get those. That looks pretty cool. Now, I could go. Um, we talked about contrast colors. And, of course, it's not up here. Uh oh, what are you looking for? Purple. Um, well, keep I, talking. I um, used to have purple contrast paint. Let me check on the It might be on the table out there. Oh, That's going to be such a bummer if I don't have it. <laughs> you got it? Magos purple is the color. Hold on, let me sit down. I don't want to lean over everything and then fall. I'm just going to sit down. I'm going to grab one other color too. But Okay, so first first things first. Um, how are we doing on time? It is quarter till. All right, perfect. So I'm going to do an experiment here, but... Um, so, uh, uh, just because I inquiring minds want to know, I can always paint it black again and do it differently. Um, on Sunday's class, we're actually going to do some OSL, um, and I think I'm going to do the OSL on this thing right here. That would have been smart. That I mean, would, would be smart. Yeah, it would, have it, it would have been smart on Sunday. Jeez. Yeah. But I'm just going to do a, a quick little... I'm guessing that this might work, possibly. And I am at least 25% sure that it might work. That's enough. <laughs> so I dry brushed it with the gold first. Mainly because it was just my dry brush was hitting it anyways. And then I thought, oh, that looks kind of cool. Dry brushing all these little tundrals of energy and stuff. So I'm just going to highlight it. While that's drying, I'll put the purple into the gold. So maybe we'll do a couple little streaks coming out. All right. Looks pretty cool. Let me guess. Are you going to take... It's a giant turkey. The purple contrast paint and paint over it. No. Gosh. <laughs> That's the dumbest idea ever. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I thought about it. I actually think the purple's too dark. <laughs> oh, is it? I did. That was my first thought, so I, oh. grabbed a different, I grabbed a different color. And I don't even know if that color will work. Probably actually work better with an ink with the airbrush, but but you know what? We're just gonna try this here now. Um, yeah, I'm switching brushes to you. That is an awful brush. Which one? My Raphael. Oh. It's, it's it's burned up. It's not. That actually was my Raphael brush. Yeah. That I've had for probably five years. So. Sweet. 
probably should throw it away. Boom. Okay, so we got that. All right, let's do the purple Magos. So this is a contrast paint. For those of you not uh, familiar with contrast paints, technically you're supposed to you're supposed to just base coat a mini, and it will make shadows and highlights. Um, it works sometimes. The rest of the time, it doesn't. <laughs> Um, but I think it works great for stuff like this. So let's grab some of this, put it down here into the shadow areas, down here. It does tend to dry slower. If you just touch the outside edge, it feathers. Like literally all you need to do is touch the outside edge. This one, I'm going to push this back a little bit, do some right there. That's huh. definitely more purpley. I like that. Be careful. You're really close to knocking over the... Yeah, the contrast paint. That would suck. Yeah. You, like, knocked it with your finger. I'm uh, pretty good at knocking over paints. Washes, paints. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Fully aware. <laughs> so the neat thing about contrast paints as opposed to washes is the pigment is a little bit stronger, I think. And so it covers a little bit better. So the purple will be more purple. E ish. Purple ish? Yep. Ooh, okay. That right there. Let's just do a little bit so you can see it even better, like up in here. That looks cool. Yeah, it does. <clears throat> it's so Office cool. Ring. Thanks. Yeah. I like it. All right. It looks cool. It is a little weird, but it does look cool. You're weird. Thanks. <laughs> uh, buddy, I don't think he has that pink contrast color. I do not have the pink contrast color, but it's on my that list. That is a really pretty color. It's on my list of colors to get. get. Yeah. I like every time I go to the game store, which is not often, but um, whenever I go, I go grab like one new, one or two new bottles of contrast. I think that works. Let's try our experiment. Uh-oh. Uh-oh is right. Wash out my brush. Okay, so we're gonna use this aromatic blue, which, by the way, is not the most, it looks colorful, and then you put it on, it's not very colorful at all, but let's see if it works over that gold. I think the key will be is just to cover the whole thing. Mm -hmm. The other key, when you're actually base coating with contrast paints, you want to do them really, really thick. And because that lets them do their contrast thing, which is separate basically. I wonder if this may have worked better if that was silver dry brushed on top of that. But let's see what the gold does. If it's gonna do something. It is. The only, the only problem with this aromatic blue, it's really good for doing like a like a sort of an ethereal glow off something, but since it doesn't color very well, um, I don't know that that looks trippy. Yeah, it's fine. gonna look really different once it dries. Yeah. But it would actually be cool if it stayed this blue right in here in between. That'd be really cool. That is a lot of paint that's gonna have to take a long. It's time gonna to take dry. long, and we're gonna sit here and watch it false no um okay so going with the whole weathering thing if i took my if i took my uh morning brown here 
put a little bit more on my palette. Uh, is that starting to run? Oh, yeah, of course it's starting to run, but that's okay. Okay. Yeah, I might have to leave this flat. Yeah. So let's just put some of this browns right up in here. So I can actually, what I was using for rust, I can use for dirt on my walls here. So I just put a ton on there and then wipe it all off. And if any of you have ever taken Erin's uh, weathering class before, this is exactly how we weather the Dipsy Dumpsters. Yeah. Super fast and super fun. Like, I, I, it's one of my favorite things to do. And I basically, I try to take everything that's given to me. Like, if, if no paint comes off my brush or very little, I just, I just feather the part that came off. So it, it always looks very, very random. Whoa. Whoa, that's that was, okay. That was... Ish. Oh. It didn't, it didn't run. Don't worry, Jesse. <laughs> if you're watching. I don't think he's in the class, but... It's not on your floor. Whew. Holy smokes, yeah. Batman. Kids, always remember to close your paint pods. Mm-hmm. I did. It was almost open, but it it was closed. It did not get All right, so you see that's just adding a little bit of that brown there. That looks pretty cool. So I'm going to have to leave this flat. Put this underneath um, the back or... Yeah. It kind of, yeah. Here. Do you want your block of resin? Perfect. Look at that. So have they showed the new Master Samurai yet? Um, like actual pictures of it painted? Does anybody know? I don't want to show it if they were like waiting to reveal it. It's... Well, I'm going to laugh really hard if they haven't even announced it. <laughs> You're just like... Uh, not... No, it was, on, it was on the main floor. Okay, flyers. Michael said not painted, no. Okay, okay so, so I'll, I'll wait. I'm not going to show it. Maybe I'll show it on s Sunday. Um, so definitely come back. I think they do that tomorrow. I think they're going to show it tomorrow. Gotcha. Maybe. I don't know. I can't. So I finished up the box art for it um, earlier this week and it came out pretty cool. All right. So that, as they say, is that. Is that um, what they say? Yeah. Did y'all have any questions? Yeah. If you have any questions, um, yell. Um, if not, we will be posting this video um, later this week. And, or maybe within the next week or two. Um, Flying Frog will put it on their page, and so you'll get a, a refresher of the, of the metallics. But I love painting true metallics. I think they're super fun. Um, I think it's really neat how they, you know, they're still reflective, but you can manipulate that reflectivity and make it even better than it actually is. So and that with a little bit of weathering, it looks very realistic, very cool. So, any questions? No? I don't see any. All righty. Well, in that case, I'm going to go to bed. I'm not going to bed. We have to set up for tomorrow. We got to set up for tomorrow. All but. right. <laughs> Anyways, keep on painting. If you got uh, contest entries, keep working on those. Get them turned in. Um, we can't wait to see them. Till next time, that's Liz. She is just a hand. I am just a hand. <laughs> Hand behind the curtain. That's, that's fine. <laughs> the one all who right. keeps everything going. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for stopping by. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.